Hey, Grishel Brand, flip the pigs. If you're someone who's disenfranchised with modern and really just wants to blow off some steam while you play the format, this is a fantastic deck to do it with. This deck embodies everything that a lot of people hate about the format and it's a blast to play. This deck is everything I dislike losing to in the format, but man, blowing off some smoke and killing people on the second turn of the game, not even the first turn of the game, is fantastic. Well, I'm finding the clip I like. I'm gonna discard these two. This is a kite sail freebooter that's really good for us here because we don't care about it. That was great. That was a good clip. I like that. All right, I think I actually am just gonna pitch this spirit guide and faithless looting here. There's a chance they have meddling mage as a follow-up. Mm, that feels kind of bad. I'm gonna bin this. Uh, I think I'm gonna bin the swamp here because I get my scry land on next turn. Humans is a tough matchup for this, this deck. This is, this is the type of deck that humans is actually a really good deck to have in the format, in my opinion, because humans is a deck that tends to punish decks that are really obnoxious, like the one we're playing. This, this is really good for us. They do not have a lot going on. Yeah, the reason, part of the reason why Spirits is such a good deck is because it's a deck that, um, just puts two hexproof lords into play and kills you a lot of the time. Nourishing Shoal is not a card I'm looking for. Think I'd rather cast Discovery here. It technically digs me deeper than Night's Whisper and it hurts me less. Spirits is the love child of humans and bogles. That's a great way to put it. It's a less degenerate version of Bogles. Yeah, it really is. All right. Yeah, a couple more draw steps here. 
So I want to, so I'm taking five, six down to 12. Uh, does a human kill us next turn? My opponent's try isn't very good, but our draw is also terrible. So they're attacking for seven. Just a regular human puts us to... A regular human doesn't kill us. So I'm going to go ahead and just Night's Whisper here. And we hit the Gorio's Vengeance. So hopefully we can go off here. The fact that I put... Am I supposed to... Gorio's Vengeance, the Barbarigmos, and kill their lieutenants. Does that buy me more time? I guess I draw 14 cards. So I draw, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this decision the same way I make all my decisions, by doing math. So there's 40 cards in my deck right now. There's 40 cards in my deck. So there's 30, 39 cards that we don't know the position of. Uh, there's three shoals in them. I get to look at 14 cards. I need at least one shoal. So we're 70, we're 75% to hit a shoal in 14 looks. No, we run four shoals, but with three shoals and 39 cards looking at 14, we're three, we're seventy five percent, and we're pretty likely to fully, fully go off. No, I already played a land for the turn. This is turn four. Yeah, I put a shoal on the bottom. So there's there's forty cards in my deck. The bottom one is shoal. I don't know the other thirty nine. There's three in those thirty nine cards. I mean, like you're playing the deck to go for it, but like I also want to like play optimally. And like since I already have two lands, I could be right to just like kill this, kill this. Looks like I need to restart magic online. It's running pretty slowly. I could ambush in and block. That's true too. The problem is waiting gives them more chances to draw disruption. And like their deck has a lot of disruption in it. Perfect. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take another hit here. Looking to draw another Simeon Spirit Guide and, and a Ritual. Did not draw Simeon Spirit Guide or a Ritual. So let's go ahead and exile. A Worm. I can't splice anything yet, right? Because I only have one Spirit Guide. I could stop and try and kill them next turn with Borborygmos. That's actually real. All right, so what's the, I already closed the thing. What's the, what's the Hyper Geo? So I've got, I've got two, two shoals and 25 cards. I'm gonna take a look at seven. So I'm only, I'm only 49% to hit. I'm only 49% to hit my second shoal here if I if I take a hit for seven. So I'm like I'm like a coin flip to lose the game if I take a hit here. Whereas if I pass. Yeah, I think I think it's right to just pass and then Borb next turn. I have a I have a Gorios, right? Uh second spirit guide is not lethal. So I don't have I don't have manamorphose. I could hit spirit guide plus manamorphose. I guess that's true. We're better than 50%, right? Because if I hit spirit guide manamorphose, I morphose Gorios Vengeance, put Borb into play and kill them. Yeah, if they draw a major of Freebooter, it's like really bad for us. I'm gonna take the hit.
We're, we're above 50% when you consider I can get Spirit Guide in Metamorphose as well. So we're dead. So we're dead. <sighs> yeah, I can I can spirit guide and loot. All right. Yeah, I think I think now we're definitely supposed to pass because we're at, we're at eighteen now, which is more more secure, and I can only draw fourteen cards here. And if I don't hit my last, so like I've already burned two Simeon Spirit Guides here. So if I don't hit both my Spirit Guides in these fourteen cards. I'm gonna do math one more time. So there's seven, there's 16 cards in my deck that I don't know the position of. There's two spirit guides. I'm looking at 14. I want both of them. We're set 75%, 76% to win. 76% to win. What odds are we to lose though? That's the question. So, like you need to you need to compare like what I'm gonna leave this this page open because we're gonna use it a lot here. <laughs> yeah. Never forget, Jack. Cowards can't block warriors. Don't be a coward. All right. All right. 76 percenter. I -o. Math is for Grishel Branders, yep. I would like to put this pig into play. Listen, chat, through the power of math and gambling, anything is possible. Ste stealing game one here is huge for us. Stealing game one means with our creature removal, we have a chance in three. We did 5-0 with burn. Wipe their board too to set it. I'm, I'm pretty down on clock. We did a lot of math that game, so I kind of want to not dick around. All, just all the removal comes in in this matchup. Just act, actual all of it. Knight's Whisper comes out. Manamorphose and Desperate Ritual comes out. Trim a Borborygmos. Are Breach and Gorios in UMA? That would be great. Yeah, and like that's the the five zero with the burn league is such a great example of the results don't tell the story, right? Because like we five would with burn with three risk factors in the main, and our conclusion at the end was the risk factors were bad. I wouldn't play them again, right? Like. I'm not gonna bring in both brutalities. It's a little bit clunky. I have anger and a braid and stuff like that. Just wondering why you cut board before. So that's actually a good question. So basically the question you wanna ask yourself in this matchup is when you're boarding with this deck is if breach world spine worm is likely to win you the game, you leave all the worms in your deck. 
if Breach World Spine Worm isn't likely to win you the game, usually you cut a worm and leave a Borborygmos in. Generally speaking, you trim to five green creatures in a lot of matchups. So that's that's what you do there. Cause like when you when you combo with this deck, you pick up your entire deck like you saw there. So like having just one Borborygmos means you're probably still gonna find it. This isn't the shuffling ASMR I'm used to. <laughs> How are we doing, folks? Happy Thursday. <laughs> Man, I hope they turn to they turn to Thalia so we can kill them. Yeah, they need they need a cage here. They could Meddling Mage, Lightning Axe. They need Cage or Meddling Mage, Lightning Axe. Oh no. Oh no, Chad, I think our opponent died. Let's boop him, boop him right on the nose. All right, I guess I'll try and kill you on turn four. It's good, clean turn four. The discoveries are great. We've played the discoveries in chat in this deck before. It's not our first time doing that. All right, uh, I need to kick magic online really quick here. While I'm doing that, I would just like to thank everybody for dropping in here today. Welcome to our very degenerate slice of the internet. My name's Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing magic uh, 30, 40, 50 hours a week. We play to the modern here on Magic Online. We play some standard on Magic Arena. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full-time. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their very wonderful support, so shout out to all of them as always. Past subscribing, you can also support my content by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com. We'll have to buy and sell some magic online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal and check out them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there with them. CoolStuffInc.com. Buy and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on magic, Pokemon, Warhammer, and Yu Gi Oh cards with them. Are you somebody that always finds the best line while playing Magic the Gathering? Why don't you put your skills to the test? Head on over to PossibilityStorm.com and find over 80 Magic the Gathering puzzles there. They have puzzles of all difficulty ranges and they do new ones every single week. And finally, BCW Supplies would love to help you protect your very valuable Magic the Gathering cards and things of that nature. They do wonderful sleeves, like these BCW Elite Guards like I have here on my Shuffle and Deck. You can use code JEFF10 at bcwsupplies.com to save 10% on all of your orders of sleeves, deck box, and all sorts of other great stuff there with them. A thousand bits if we turn one someone. Believe me, if there's a chance to turn one someone, we're gonna take it. All right, Magic Online's loaded back up. We're 1-0 after beating humans. Let's go ahead and head on into the next match here. What's going on, Anner? I'm gonna be doing a bunch of modern over the next couple days, Anner. I'm gonna do modern tomorrow morning as well while the, while the PT has their draft portion. I'm gonna do some modern on Saturday also. Do I, do we have a link to the snap, the snap keep? Did somebody link snap, the snap keep one? All right, I got, I got the clip. Excellent. I like Discovery. I think it's worth playing. This isn't our first time we played the deck with Discovery. If you haven't seen us play it, play with Discovery before, you should check out the YouTube channel. There's a video of it up there. Uh, I, I think most hands with Faithless Looting our keep. We're on the draw, we have a Scry Lance. We get some looks at stuff. Perfect. 
Perfect. So, uh, turn one stomping ground could be a lot of different things, some of which are slow. So, I'm actually going to lead on the Scry Land and probably the Night's Whispers as well. Yeah, it could be Valakut. Valakut's a pretty good matchup for us. Their Goldfish, on average, is much slower than ours. Oh, Panza, sure. I'll fetch an extra basic swamp here then. This matchup should also be reasonable for us. Man, the artwork on that card is beautiful. This is one of those cards you can only get in foil and paper, right? So we're also getting to a point where like World Spine Worm is a very good draw here because we just get to like, yep. So they can't interact with my hand, right? So do I just, do I want to drain them here? I'm definitely killing the Huntmaster. I probably don't need a second through the breach. I don't want to discard either of my mana sources because if they stone rain me next turn, I want to be able to draw into a land and still do it. Oh, I should duress for stone rain. That's what I should do. I should duress for stone rain. Hazaret Inferno Titan. Yep. <coughs> we are having a good time with Bonner Day. We played a bunch of very reasonable decks. I think just being more strict on which decks I accept as donation decks for Modern will allow me to enjoy it more. I think I just kind of like playing standard. Playing standard made playing getting beat up in modern a little bit less fun so having playing a string of reasonable decks is, is enjoyable for sure Yeah, you're not wrong, Goose. There, there's a reason why every Saffron Olive deck in Modern involves, like, a bunch of Chalice of the Voids, Blood Moon, and other Hail Mary cards, right? Like, just a bunch of hope Hope these, these semi-real cards steal the game. And they're dead through Inferno Titan, right? Yeah, because they won't be able to block with Hazret. Uh, this matchup is literally click submit, right? Is anger marginally better than collective brutality? Maybe. Maybe. That wasn't shade towards Saffron. That was that was Saf that was me acknowledging that Saffron understands the format. That a lot of the decks aren't particularly good, but he does he works within the conditions to make them playable, which is put cards that can get free wins. A braid sounds good. That's a good suggestion. 
trim a Knight's Whisper. They want to do that because they could have they have they often have Trinisphere. Sometimes they have Cage. Sometimes they have Relic. So two two of Brain sounds great. This card is so good because like the fact that it has a text box when they don't have artifacts is really good. This is just not keepable. I mean, discovery is basically a way to get something in the bin. Deal. I love that this deck just gets to sidestep graveyard hate by just like breaching people post board too. Temple is very good in this archetype. Oh no, not scavenging ooze. Why do you feel Trine gets so much dislike? It decks like this don't see as much play because they go off faster. It's very, very, the easiest way I can articulate to you why people hate Tron in a reasonable manner is write down the list of cards that Tron cares about and write down the list of cards that interact with Storm, that interact with this deck. The number of cards that interact with decks like this is much, much higher than anything that can interact with Tron. Interacting with lands is incredibly difficult. Whereas interacting with Spells and creatures is much, much easier. Man, chat, they played a hate piece on two and a hate piece on three. And I was really unlucky and I mulliganed to six. All right, let me draw some cards. Hold on. I probably need to take another hit here, right? Yeah, and try and literally just O stones any hate cards. It just doesn't matter. Correct. I'm just I'm just drawing 14 cards. This is just, this is just a draw 14. So with these cards next turn I can breach worm and kill them. Oh my god, I should have kept the Borborg bows to pitch the shoal. That was a mistake. I can pitch shoal to shoal, so it's not too big of a deal, but I should have I should have kept the uh Oh I have to pay for nourishing shoals or Trinosphere. Yeah, I do. Alright, huh. Maybe this is slightly more complicated than I'd like. We should be okay though, right? I guess I binned a bunch of creatures to make this bigger. I might have foobarred this. Second Scooze, that's really good for me. Second Scooze is actually incredibly good for me. Yeah, we're gonna braid the three ball at end of turn. And then untap and breach this world spine worm. But these towards Grixis mid-range will do Paradise Sal. Thank you for the support. I think that one's almost at the top of the queue at this point.
Remember, remember that time they played hate cards on two, three, and four, and then lost on turn five? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Pepperidge Farm, it was well, it was well fought, well fought. GG! Good, good clean living, 2040. Two Yeah, probably. Hey, wiggle, wiggle. Dee, 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 dee. Now, I'm sure there's some people that have never watched this deck in chat before. This is one of the many decks you can find on my website, and we've played this deck a ton. There's probably 12 or 13 links for this deck on my website. But new people always ask, after seeing a couple of matches like those two, what are this deck's bad matchups? This deck doesn't have bad matchups. It has bad draws. When this deck is firing on all cylinders, it beats literally everything. The nut draws in this deck are obscene and probably shouldn't be legal in the format, but Faithless Looting is here, so, you know, let's have a good time. Yeah, I like Discovery more than, more than Cathartic Reunion and stuff. You know that feeling when you're playing against Burn and you then defeat Bolt for one more turn? Playing against Trot is like that every game? Yep. The Dredge matchup is okay for us. A lot of the times they'll have ley lines in their sideboard, which can make it hard for us post board if they hit them. But yeah, on, on average, Dredge is a good matchup. Our Goldfish is faster than theirs. That being said, this type of race matchup is one that Creeping Chill made better for Dredge because Creeping Chill makes Dredge's clock a little bit quicker so they can race us a little bit more consistently. What am I getting rid of here? Does this deck have a better linear game plan than Infect? It has a faster linear game plan than Infect, but it's less consistent. Consistency is this deck's issue. Am I just bidding Nourishing Shoal here? I think I'm finishing Nourishing Shoal, right? I think it's like Shoal plus land. I think I just want as many looks as possible to like find something to breach in. going on Luca afternoon crippling chill sure yeah I probably said creeping chill or something like that the new the new black card is what I'm talking about you got a narco me but opponent So like there's no guarantee that I hit a green card though. And like if I hit a green card, it's likely to be a world spine worm, and world spine worm probably what I want to breach into play. Playing against this deck in an actual tournament is actually the worst feeling in competitive magic. You might as well just sit there and like flip coins or like play poker or blackjack or something. Just like draw straws and see who dies. Like, what you do against this deck often just doesn't matter. Either they kill you or they don't. I think, I think it's supposed to be the Shoal. I'm gonna start with this because I wanna I wanna get the cards that I don't have selection over first before I excuse me start playing the cards that give me selection. Yeah, the Knight's Whisper is one of the reasons why this deck is able to play through disruption so efficiently as it does, because 
the having a critical mass of cards with Knight's Whisper is very important. Containment Priest would be a great addition to this format. What's going on, J Robes? Thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. This could be a draw where we're just too slow here. That being said, we could also just like draw a worm next turn and like breach the worm. Scourge Devil's a scary one. That card hits like a truck. All right, open for a worm or a gristlebrand here. I mean, sure, sometimes people race you, but like people, other modern decks aren't as fast as this one. So if you take any other deck's best draw in the format, it's gonna lose to this deck's best draw every time. I literally just Googled hypergeometric calculator and clicked the top link. Second to the top link. StatTrek.com. Yeah, I think it's right to ape another discovery here. So here's a question. If I breach the Gristle Brand next turn, will I have enough mana to actually win the game? Or am I supposed to bin it and hope to draw Gorios? I think I'm supposed to bin this and hope to draw Gorios. I could also discovery into Gorios next turn and potentially win the game still. The problem is we're gonna die, Jet. Like I'm at 12 and like they could hit a creeping chill this turn and like have a bunch of hasty things with Scourge Double too. Uh, Discovery replaced copies of like Cathartic Reunion and stuff. Yeah, having all the life total doesn't does increase our odds of whiffing. Are we dead? They get to hit me for six, and then, yeah, we're actually exactly dead this turn. Con flank kills me. This is two, and then these gain haste. Uh, the other two narcos can't attack, but, yeah, otherwise I'm dead. Anger gets to come in here. Trim a Knight's Whisper because they're a little aggressive. Call it a day. Call it a day. Time me out. I was wrong. You can always find the real adults. Zach takes his, they take their punishment.
because I like to be in detention with smart people. <laughs> Hit it. Again, I feel like people always ask why this deck's not more popular even though it's doing powerful things. I think this deck is emotionally taxing to play because it feels bad when you lose games where like you kind of didn't lose because of your choices, right? Like our deck, when this deck loses, it loses because it just comes up short. Like you don't hit the right mix of your combo cards, you just die. It's just how it goes. <clears throat> God, this hand is so much better on the draw. Am I supposed to, am I supposed to kill them? Try and kill them on turn three? So I could, I could pass, draw, discard, and then Gorio's Vengeance on three. Alternatively, I could Temple of Malice and hit a Faithless Looting and kill them next turn. I'm gonna Temple of Malice. I think it's too slow. I think three is too slow. The problem is, if I go off on turn three, having already burned a Simeon Spirit Guide, I'm pretty likely to brick because I need to find a lot more Spirit Guides. And like with only three in my deck, my odds of not hitting two become kind of realistic. I feel like I'm pretty likely to go off on three, even with playing lands and I have a chance to go off on turn two by playing a land. Well, to my knowledge, Yoshi Man, those other decks don't really exist in the format. Dredge does often play Ley Lines. All right, I'm gonna start by Manamorphosing because we could hit Faithless Looting and then kill them. Wow, what a tilt. If we'd have cast Discovery first, we'd have gotten to Ben Gristlebrand. That's unfortunate. Woof. It's it's correct to Manamorphose there, but it just it doesn't it doesn't feel good. It's correct to Manamorphose, but it doesn't feel good. I like how I describe the deck as emotionally taxing and this deck's like, don't worry, Jeff, I got you. I'm going to show you what, I'm going to show them what you mean. Our poker hand is certainly the best at the moment. All right, so we can kill them on their upkeep. So next turn, we'll discard Grizzly Bees to hand size, and then during their upkeep, we'll Gorio's Vengeance it into play and combo them. Yeah, they're not they're not doing anything to us. So like the fact that we're just like sitting here spinning our tires just like doesn't really matter. Resolves. 
Oh, I guess, I guess this puts us a turn behind, right? This puts us a turn behind because we won't be able to discard the hand size next turn. Rats! This is, this is actual time walk, to be fair. This is actual factual time walk for them. Thoughts on going to 18 lands with this deck. I think that's nonsense. I think you have plenty of card selection and your card selection can help you not need more lands. I mean, Thoughtseize can be bad if they can target you with Thoughtseize. Counterspells can be bad if you don't have a free counterspell. We're gonna see him cast Life from Malone here, I'd assume. Yep. Makes their conflagrate better next turn. They're getting back two amalgams here. Would still really like to draw Faithful Saluting. Or Anger. Anger would also be fine. So I just anger now, right? It gets me really far from, am I even supposed to anger? So the problem with moving to hand size is that I have to draw shoal plus a worm in seven hits. So my chance of hitting one of those is 52%. So my chance of hitting both is squaring that. And then it's like, so we're like one in four approximately. It's a, the calculation's slightly more complicated than that, but one in four is close enough. So I don't get 14 hits chat because they're gonna flash back Conflagrate and bring back Scourge Devil which means blocking is not gonna net me seven more because I'm gonna take a massive hit. Now the flip side of this is also that they get to dredge next turn, which could hit a, hit a chill and they could, they could flashback conflagrate for uh, dredgling, flashback conflagrate for eight. So I might, I might just be dead even if I, I, I think I'm supposed to go for it because even if I, even if I anger, I could still die next turn. I'm dead, I'm dead to them dredging creeping chill next turn. So like, we're not a favorite to win here, but I think we're supposed to go for it because we died at creeping chill conflagrate. So I believe we're about one in four to hit here. Thereabouts. That's true. That's true. The better, the better T, the play that's better for the TV is to, is to try and do it, do the thing. So obviously that's the right line. Good game's opponent. 
We get we got one of the two. We got one of the two. We hit we won the coin flip. We did not win the other coin flip. Sometimes sometimes you gotta win both of them. Now I need the Simeon Spirit Guides to combo. So like I'm already trying to combo with so few resources that I need every resource. So if they have if they have surgical, I'm just gonna die. So So, if this discovery finds a gristle pig to put in the discard pile, we uh, we can kill them on three. Tron's a good matchup for this deck. So I was going to SCG Regional this week. What would I play? Green Black Elves. It's the deck that I'm playing at the SCG Invitational for the modern portion. Perfect. What about Amulet Titan? Amulet Titan has too much shuffling and complexity for me to play it. I just don't, I don't want to try and play Amulet Titan for however many matches the Invitational is. I'll, I'll mess it up at some point. Well, that's incredibly unfortunate. I guess that means I need to hit pig now and kill them before they can activate it. Okay, that, uh, that lets me sidestep it. Maybe I'm just supposed to bin both Goryeo's Vengeance there. I mean, I'm probably supposed to keep the land and bin two Vengeance there. And again, this is like, this matchup is good for our deck on Davridge, but when we lose, we're gonna lose because we just don't do anything, right? And that's just like what happens with this deck a lot of the time. Oh no, not a random card out of my discard pile. I mean, the fact that they popped the relic aggressively there. Okay, they have another one. That makes sense. So say that gives me that gives me outs that they don't have to give me. Oblivion Stone's actually incredibly annoying. Just time them out, Pikes. Just time them out. They're gonna take my mountain here. Okay, I think I'm dead now.
Cut, collective brutality, bring in an abraid, click submit. You know, it's funny, um, since I started doing standard on the channel, the modern numbers have actually been up a little bit too. I think it's both on Twitch and YouTube. I think new standard is just energize people about magic in general and uh, having a little bit less content means people make a point to show up for the one times I am doing it. What's going on, Prof Swago? Welcome to a live one. Thanks for dropping in. Hope you're having a good Thursday wherever you're at. We've had a pretty, we've had a pretty good set of good set of leads today. I've been a little bit down the couple last couple times we played modern, but I feel like we've had good sets of games today so far. Both in the both in the two three league and the burn league that we five owned. We're hoping you rage quit and start up arena. I mean, I'm not offended if people that prefer standard content go and watch other people that are making standard content right now. Like, there's plenty of other people that are reasonable that make lots of standard content, too. Yeah, I think that's true, too, Gundog. I think there's going to get a lot of people brought into Magic during this time period. We have, Jimmy. This is match five. This is match four, actually. You're definitely going to want to go back and watch the first two. They were very good matches of Magic. And thank you for the six-month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Why, why? Pact of Negation is very bad in this matchup, Chef Seth. Pact of Negation is exclusively for Skullcrack and Counter Spells. I'm telling you, shuffling decks are the best. It's like, it's like a magic, it's like a fidget spinner for a magic player, basically. So like keep your hands busy. Every, every game chat, just like Crystal Brand, just the top card when we're hoping to bid him with Discovery in a hot second. Um, I think I actually keep this land because I can shoal pitch Borb breach this for four mana. So I just need like two more lands here. Ugh, that is not, that is not the untapped mana source I wanted next turn. Putting the other Borb on the bottom of our deck could potentially have bad repercussions for us. Yep. Really want to draw Faithless Looting into a mana source. Karn just being double Stone Rain is so good. I, I did. It's just, just completely sickening, Brad. It's the part where they Ulamog us and take our other two lands. And like, the problem is like, you can't even be mad when the Tron player does this. Cause like, we're a bigger asshole than the Tron player. Like we're playing Grishel brand, right? So like, you can't, you can't even like reasonably be upset that like they went stone rain with suspend double stone rain you because like our deck's even more obnoxious than that a lot of the time. Just like, again, just you know, welcome, welcome to modern, enjoy your stay. Welcome. Welcome to Modern. Enjoy your stay. It's like, it's like when the Storm player gets salty that they got comboed or something like that. It's just like, well, you're playing Storm, so like, fuck off, like. I'm still mad. 
you can be mad for me, but I'm I'm not mad. I'm I'm content. I understand what's going on here. Why you have to be mad? It's only game. Didis, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support there. I know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for supporting mine. Home renovations, conference calls, and emergency bug fixes. Sounds like you're busy. Thanks for the bit, Sean. This matchup's probably bad for us too, but sometimes you just get your bad matchups. Like, we beat humans round one. If our, if our hands are good, the deck's unbeatable. Not in, my, not in my experience, Gaucho, but there isn't really an objective measurement to really know, there isn't really an objective measurement that we have to know that in one direction or the other. We've not cast the back cast of Discovery Dispersal at any point this at any point yet. I think I've played two or three leagues with it. The Steam Vents might be nonsense. I've got like this one Steam Vents in here with this idea that like maybe we could bounce a ley line of the void at some point, but I don't I don't know. It's probably it's probably hot nonsense. I think the one steam vents is like a pretty low opportunity cost. So like keeping it seems fine. Uh, dispersal. All right, so they have a spell queller. We're just dead. I have faith that you'll win off the top deck like a pro. Maybe they've got a lot of annoying little Dorcos in play here. Thanks for the bit, Sebra. To be fair, you don't use the second half super often. Uh, I did not discard Temple. I discarded uh, Black Cleave Cliffs. I, unlike most Magic players, I understand that words have meaning. So I'm not going to tell you that a card that's different is strictly better. However, I do think that Discovery is better than Cathartic Reunion on average in this deck. Yeah, yeah, if we find Gorio's Vengeance, we could potentially kill them here. Assuming assuming no spell color, obviously. So much like the word literally includes figuratively in its definition now in Webster's Dictionary, um, strictly better among magic players also includes mostly better because that's what they mean. They mean it's generally better most of the time. Oh, that was a mistake. I should have, uh, I should have done this in response to this. I was thinking I could respond to the triggers, but this is a Lord, so that's not true.
That's not true. What if the rest of your board is exactly the cheese stands alone and no no other permanence? In that case, having creatures was just worse than, than not having creatures. So having creatures is in fact not strictly better than having creatures, not having creatures. Jeez. Everybody always forgets Baron Glory. Damn casual magic players. Can't remember Baron Glory. So you basically trim Night's Whispers against any deck that's not aggressive because you can't afford to take the hit, the hit to your health total. Baron Glory is not competitive in Modern. It's not a deck that I'll play. It's possible I should bring in Pact of Negation here. It's just, it's just difficult because you don't want to overboard with this deck because remember we're, we're a linear combo deck at our core so like every card we bring in that interacts with our opponent comes at a co the cost of consistency to our primary game plan we've played restore balance on stream before i don't think it's particularly good but it's like you know maybe playable i don't know it's like bad living end basically it has a very similar game plan to living end Ooh. Soul Sisters for our donation. I don't think so. The last few times we've played Soul Sisters decks, they've just been dog poop. Just too many bad cards in the deck. And the synergy payoff that they're working towards just isn't good enough. So, I mean, you could play a secret but this deck doesn't actually put that many creatures in the graveyard like look at my deck there's only six creatures these don't go in the graveyard how much money to make you play jun jun's a pretty reasonable deck i'd play that for a normal ten dollar donation for a subscriber details on how my deck queue works can be found here. Reasonable modern decks I'll take for ten dollar donations. Things that are terrible, you gotta ship more money in for. I gotta get I gotta get paid extra if I'm just gonna get beat up. This hand like doesn't do anything as it is, but I have a hard time mulliganing like Faithless Looting plus Discovery here. I get to see a lot of cards. Like I need a pig plus a plus a Gorio's Vengeance, but I get a lot of looks at it. Slivers is just really terrible and we had a bunch of people donate for it like right in a row at one point. And I was just off it. Look at that chat, you just gotta believe. You just gotta believe. Please play a Noble Hierarch. 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 Please cast Aether Vial. That does not cast Curse Catcher. Thank you, opponent. I appreciate you. All right. Do you have a Surgical Extraction? This is pretty unfair. We might win on turn three here. And for those of you that are new to Magic, it's turn three because I took two turns and they took one turn. So, you know, two, two plus one is three. Third turn of the game. Did I 
find worms and spirit guides. I found a worm. Did I not find spirit guides? Are there no simian spirit guides in my hand? There's one simian spirit guide in my hand. All right, cast, exile. Exile the worm. Thankfully, this lets me draw 14 more cards. I never get tired of seeing this. What's going on? Leave it eight. Thank you for the two month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Did I find another spirit guide? I did. All right. So here's how we kill them for people that haven't seen this deck go off before. So we'll exile this and I'm going to splice Desperate Ritual onto here. So I start, in addition to getting to draw more cards here, I'm going to get to make, make some mana. King Katan, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Uh, Squee, can you please, uh, use the, use the Google form and just put, put in the comment that you sent money in already. The Google form just helps me keep track of everything. Just a friendly reminder to not send me money for things until I've told you that, yes, this is something I'm willing to play. Sorry. So it's actually easier to combo with this deck in paper because when you play this deck in paper, you can organize your hand as you draw the card. So like put the cards that actually do something in one pile and the cards that don't do something in another. Why is why is the blue black better than just playing playing this ulti list that we've been playing? I've been really happy with the green splash. Then we put our friend Borborygmos into play. And Borborygmos goes, wee, wee, wee. Kill your board and then kill you. Put a hat on that one. If you like it, then you should have put a hat on it. If you like it, then you should have put a hat on it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, can you, can we just like pour one out? Shout out. To Aaron Forsyth, Ian Duke, and all the members of R&D that prevented my opponent from having Stoneforge Mystic and Birthing Pot in their hand right now. Thank God they didn't have Stoneforge Mystic or Birthing Pot in their hand. We might have been in trouble this game if they'd have been allowed to register one of those terribly oppressive cards that many people everywhere all over the internet assure me are incredibly too strong for modern. I have been assured by many professional magicians, chat. Or maybe they're just random people that post on Reddit. You know, one of the two. Yeah, the green splash is for Assassin's Trophy and um, and uh, Nature's Claim in the board. You can find my Soul Time Mill list on the website that Jekyll Girl submitted a few times we've worked on together on stream. But, but Reddit said, Reddit told me my split and twist would too good. And Stone Forge Mystic would make Bird unplayable. <laughs> They're just trying to protect the Goblin Guides, chat. I mean, this, this hand kills on turn two. Turn one, Ben Gristlebrand to hand size. I mean, they have a chance to play rest in peace this game, to be fair. We could get ripped on two. They could have Curse Catcher on one, like. Sorry, we'll kill on turn four. They'll get two turns, we'll get two turns. Technically turn four, Spirit Guide. That, that's actually lethal too. That's, that's actually potentially lethal. This is, I'm not here to not go for the turn one kill chat. I'm not here to not go for the turn one kill. We are, this is, I would like the record to reflect 
that I understand that this is incredibly unlikely to work. We, there is a strong chance we brick off and die here. That being said, you don't play Grishel Brand to not try and go for the turn one kill, okay? You don't, you don't play Grishel Brand to not try and go for the turn one kill. All right, let's go, buckle up. All right, let's draw some cards. Let's draw some cards. Thank God they don't have Stoneforge Mystic. I don't know what we would do. I don't know, our, our sequence would have to be different because Stoneforge Mystic would throw us off our game. Watch us like brick off and die here. I'm certain we're about to brick off and die, but that's fine. It's the principle of the thing. You gotta try. Holy crap. Holy crap. There was not, there was literally no shoals in the top half of our deck. There were literally zero shoals in the top half of our deck. I mean, I guess I have to looting, but like, why did we even sideboard, right? <laughs> oh. Man, we drew two spirit guides too. If there had just been a shoal, if there had just been a shoal, Oh, God. So, I can't Faithless Looting again because then I'm through. Well, I, I, I could Faithless Looting again, but if I Faithless Looting again, I don't have enough Spirit Guides left to kill them this turn. So... This is everything I wanted out of this deck, right? I would replace Knight's Whispers with Insolent Neonate. No, I don't think so. I think that shows a fundamental amount of inexperience with this deck, Yachiri. One of, one of the reasons why this deck is able to play through Disruption and consistently assemble what it's doing and be good against Counterspells is because it's not playing cards like that. Oh, I didn't draw any fetch lands in there either. That feels pretty bad. All right, so we're dead to rest in peace now. We're dead to land plus muscle burst, right? too many lands oh I discarded too many lands mm. I just I was I could I could go at instant speed but I needed to keep a land over this yeah I know they I know they have queller I fucked up I know they have queller but like I would just pass the turn and kill them at instant speed if they didn't have queller but like I, I I played a land and I, I shouldn't have played a land there. I should have kept the spirit guide. I should have kept I should have discarded the spirit guide and kept a fifth land is what happened. Oh, I should push noble. Now I can't push Noble because I passed priority. Yeah, I needed to push. I just, I, I fucked up twice now. I just messed up twice now. So I messed up not keeping the land and then I messed up not pushing the Noble. I 
I mean, I can do it. Chat, I... Chat doesn't understand why it doesn't work. Uh, so, if I push the noble, they float mana. Sure, I can still attack with him, but the point here, chat, the issue is that they very obviously have Spell Queller. So, what I needed to do was, I needed to push this during my main phase, they float mana, and then I'd move to beginning of combat because changing phases removes the mana floating from their pool, and then Goryeo's Vengeance inside the beginning of combat and attack with my thing. To be fair, it's like not super intuitive. Thank you, Healthy Froggy. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to jam here. And, like, pushing the Noble means I don't die to the Spellcaller next turn. So, like, whatever. I messed this up twice. Sorry. I think we likely would have won this game if I would have played a little bit better. Had two pretty big mistakes. Keeping the spirit guide and not discarding the land. And then my sequencing here. This is this is turn two. This is our second turn. So if I would have kept four lands in my hand, I could have just passed the turn here and then at any point Gorio's Vengeance Barbarig most into play and kit my opponent for 12 directly. But because I only have three lands and they're at 10, that's not an option. And then my second mistake again was I needed to push during my main phase so when they float mana with this noble, I can change to beginning of combat, have their mana pool empty, and then they can no longer spell queller my Gorio's Vengeance. They took the bait and died. I passed priority. I passed priority. They took the bait and died. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, if you've watched this deck, if you're familiar with modern, the play patterns in this deck are real, they're really weird, right? Like... So we, we failed the combo on turn one, even though we tried, we got a little bit unlucky. And then I tried to punt the game and not win on two, but our opponent, my opponent and I played soccer for a hot second there and they ended up kicking the ball back in my direction. I just put it right into the, right into the goal. Um, I like the discovery dispersals in this deck. They're, they're a good addition, they're worth playing. The only thing I am kind of uncertain of in this deck right now is that I don't know if this steam vents is worth it the steam vents might just be better as a third basic mountain and playing the dispersal half of this card might be nonsense but everything else in this deck list I like it a lot I think it's very trim 
Um, I think it's got a lot of, it's, I think it's good at running a lot of different people over. All right, all right, what are we doing?